So I'm going to look at the question of if you have two points on a curved mirror where and you shine parallel rays of light onto those two points, where do the reflections meet? And we'll do that and then we'll reference uh, the question of uh, uh, reflections in a, in a parabola and that will reference back to the work we're doing looking at the Schoenhausen uh, cubic. Um, so here's my two points on the parabola a on, on a, a general curve A and C and we've got the tangents at meeting at point B. We'll make that into a little triangle. And I'm going to specify the angle at B. Now we'll call that theta. And so now my parallel rays of light are going to come in. Um, here's one coming in here. And here's another coming in. We're going to make them parallel by constraining the parallel constraint. And um, just so I can reference it, I'd like to specify the angle um, that one of the rays comes in. And so we'll specify that angle to be phi. And so that lets me move the rays around if I want. And now I'm going to, this, this ray gets reflected in this line here, this tangent. That means well, this ray gets reflected in this tangent. Um, and now let me just change uh, phi around a bit, just uh, like to get them into a, a nicer location, I think. Um, there we go. Let's have it up there. In fact, I'd also like to change theta. I don't like the way this is looking. Let's reduce it a bit. There we go. Um, so what I'm interested in is uh, the intersection between these two, the point D. In particular, I'm interested in where does D go if we change um, if we change phi around different angles of uh, uh, incoming ray. Um, well, what I'd like to do is just look at that angle A, D, C. We see that's 2 pi minus theta, but there's something missing from that. Um, what's missing is phi. Uh, so regardless of the incoming angle, these two rays meet at a specific um, uh, uh, angle of 2 pi minus theta. So the reflected rays meet at that angle, but it, if the angle is constant, that means that D must lie on a circle. Um, and we can draw that circle by just selecting A, D and C and use the circle construction that gives you the circumcircle. Uh, now there it is, and as we change phi, um, we're seeing that D, uh, in fact, goes around that circle. Um, but what circle is it? Uh, how is it related, for example, to the circumcircle of A, B, and C? Now we can draw that. Let's draw that circumcircle. Uh, there it is. Um, and it looks as if the center of the circumcircle of A, B, and C lies on the circle that D lies on. And we can check that just by um, uh, drawing A, F, C and asking for that angle. Uh, indeed, it's 2 pi minus theta. So, um, so in order to find the, the locus of the intersection points um, of parallel rays impinging on two uh, points on a curved mirror, um, we just need to find the circumcircle of the two points and the intersection of the tangents of those two points. 
along with, and then take the circumcircle of those two points at the center of that circumcircle. Um, okay, well, let's just try that, um, referencing the uh, parabola uh, y equals x squared. So we'll draw our parabola. And what we have to do is type in x squared. And we get the actual one that we want. And we can zoom in on that to get a bit of it. This is um, what we want to look at. Um, now, I'm going to want two points on the on the parabola. There's one point and there's another. Um, let's just make that, instead of S, uh, we'd, let's make it T plus H. So when we move T around, it moves as well. And now we need to intersect the tangents at those two locations. There's one tangent. Uh, here's another tangent, and we select the two lines to intersect them. So now, remember what we need to do. We need to take the three points and create the circumcircle through these three points, that line, that circle. And we now need to take the two points, A and B, and the center of the circumcircle, and that creates um, another circumcircle. And that is the locus of the intersections of parallel rays hitting A and B. I'm going to turn both of those into uh, grey, um, as we're going to be looking for something, uh, yet another circle. Let's see. Turn that one back. Make the big one grey, make that one blue. Um, Okay, the um, as h, what happens as h gets smaller and smaller? What we're looking for here is a point that lies on um, the uh, on the caustic, and the caustic, remember, is the envelope of the of the reflections and the tangent, but it also can be thought of as the intersection of two neighboring reflected rays for the neighboring is defined as in a limit process. So in other words, um, the locus of the locations on the caustic is the limit of this circle as h gets smaller and smaller. So let's make h get smaller and smaller and we can see it does look like we're heading towards a limit. Um, that limit circle, we can think of it as going to be tangent to the tangent at t, it's going to be through the point t, and it's going to have some specific um, radius um, to be determined. So that's what we'd like to do, is find the limit of that blue circle as we get smaller and smaller, because uh, once we find that, um, we can then draw the limit circle, because it's going to, look, it's going to go from here to a, it's going to be tangent to this tangent here. And it's going to have the limit radius. That's what we need to find. Um, so what's the radius of the finite circle? Uh, limits are a job for a cast. So we're going to um, uh, there's my finite circle there. We're going to use Wolfram Alpha for this. Um, let's grab this. We're going to need to copy the text. Uh, we're going to go to Wolfram Alpha um, and enter what we want. But what we're going to want to do is do the limit. So let me just type that in, limit of, uh, paste in my expression as h approaches zero. And so Wolfram Alpha is going to sit there and give us a limit, hopefully, um, working on it, but there we go. When you're using Wolfram Alpha, you've got to make sure that it has actually got your input reasonably. Uh, in fact, this does look reasonable. Uh, and this limit um, we see is this expression. Now, we want to grab that expression and put it back into um, GX Web. So if I click on it, I get it sitting there 
is an input in Wolfram Alpha. And now that I have that, if I hover over it, I get the plain text option, copyable plain text. That's what I want to use. So there's my copyable plain text. And copy that um, and move back into GX Web um, where I can constrain the radius of this. Um, so I've got two circles selected, make sure I just select one. I've got the radius here, and I can paste in um, the thing that came from uh, um, from Wolfram Alpha. So let me just observe as I let H tend to zero, but in fact, um, we are approaching that uh, limit. That looks good. Um, now, uh, let me get rid of these other circles here. Hide them off anyway. And we can get rid of the, these guys. And so now here we've got that limit circle. And as we move around, we see that it... Uh, uh, it grows, but there's one very special location for that, the location where that limit circle actually touches the other side of the parabola. Uh, and that would put F on the y-axis. So let's just have a look where that is. Um, well, we see it's at um, X equals three t over four minus t cubed. For that to be zero, um, we would have to have t squared equals three quarters or t equals the square root of three upon two. 